Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. On this episode, we are talking about using Power Platform to create and launch advanced ISV products, and in particular, the opportunities for solutions related to IT Service Management, or ITSM, and IT Asset Management, or ITAM. This episode is sponsored by Provence, and my guests, Provence Project Manager and Principal Consultant Jennifer Grasson and Principal Consultant Brian Field, tell me about their organization's approach to using Power Apps to deliver their new solution, Service Team ITSM. We discuss some of the specific challenges that the app solves, how their thinking on ITSM and ITM has been influenced by advances at Microsoft in other areas like Teams and Dynamics 365, and how customers are using ITSM and ITM solutions in new and innovative ways. I thought we could just start with some intros for our listeners. Uh, Brian, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. My name is Brian Field. I'm a principal consultant uh, with uh, Provence. A long uh, background in, in IT from managing call centers, doing IT support, and then, you know, moving into my work with Provence here in the last uh, almost uh, 19 years at this point. All right. Excellent. And Jennifer, welcome. Hi. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. So, you know, I have a a long background too of working in Dynamics on the Dynamics platform since like 3.0 days and have been a principal consultant and project manager at multiple consultants companies um, or partner companies around the world. And I just started at Provence in October after being a customer with them for about seven years. So it's been really exciting to work with a product that I actually selected to use at my past company and improve upon it. So oh, very, looking forward. Very interesting. All right. Well, I'd love for you to tell us a bit more about Provence. Brian, do you want to take that? Sure. Yeah. So Provence is now into its 26th year in the uh, ITSM and ITAM space. Primarily, we started as an ITAM company back in uh, the late 90s. And in fact, that's how I became aware of Provence when I was managing that call center I was talking about and, and helping about there. I was actually a customer too. And we used uh, the Provence uh, tool at the time to supplement the business that, that we were offering to our uh, to our government customers. So ended up uh, getting exposed there and was able to join the company. But in that time, now we have transitioned to and have identified opportunities over the years where we can take advantage and leverage the Microsoft platforms and ultimately have become a, a Microsoft partner in the ITSM or IT service management space and the ITAM space, IT asset management as well. Here in the last oh, 12 years or so, we've been exclusively building out uh, ISV solutions on the Microsoft platforms. And most recently, uh, we've re-engineered our solution into what we've now uh, marketed as the service team ITSM, service team ITAM products on the Power Platform. All right. Yeah, I would like to know a little more about that, maybe at a high level, how you've approached the opportunities or the possibilities of using Power Platform, Power Apps in the context of ITSM. Yeah. So. Yeah, as, as an ISV partner, you know, we've, we've really tried to work with the Microsoft product teams and, you know, over the years, uh, we actually started um, in the service manager environment, but, but had developed relationships and had developed a, a good base into what Microsoft was providing and then what we ultimately wanted to provide as well. And through that relationship and that partnership, it was pretty clear to us that Power Apps and the Power Platform was, was really an opportunity for us to take our our technology and our products in that direction. And it, and it's really worked out well for us. It's it's become an ideal platform for us to build our products on as as pro developers. So now we're taking that power platform and are able to build enterprise class applications with significant capabilities, once again, leveraging a lot of the components that the that the platform brings to the table for us. It also gives us some flexibility, right? or the flexibility of the platform gives us the ability to integrate with other apps within the business. So now we're not just looking at, you know, the biopic look at ITAM or ITSM, 
but we're able to expand that into into other workloads, other other areas of the business to really provide uh, what's turning out to be bigger than just a you know a service desk or or a help desk type application. Yeah, when it comes to service team, what are some of the specific challenges that you're trying to solve in that? Yeah, so within within the, the service team product, and again, we have the ITSM and, and ITAM applications or apps that we have there. So, you know, when we first started there, it was a very simple approach. And we wanted to be, you know, a first-class service desk. We wanted to be a first-class ITAM application. But what's been happening over the last three or four years is now we have, you know, used the platform to sort of extend and use the capabilities that we have to look into different areas of the business. You know, one example is that everybody is is familiar with is what happened with COVID, right? So we worked with um, a couple of companies and they had wanted to basically set up a COVID hotline, if you will. Well, this is not IT oriented, right? It's servicing their customers who had questions either about company policy or you know or other aspects of how that company was responding to the to the crisis and be able to capture that information log what was going on and 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 be able to be responsive to to their customers and that was all done with Provence ITSM i mean you would not necessarily marry that together right but that they we were able to extend our our application into that area or, you know, another, you know, COVID related item when looking at ITAM, change the business of how people work, right? So you're now, we're forced to work from home. Well, that adds challenges to managing your, your IT assets that are now not just deployed in a, you know, in a few floors in a building or whatever you might have there, but now it's, it's spread over broad areas and it's very easy to lose track of that. So, we're now able to take advantage of Microsoft uh, products like Intune or System Center Configuration Manager, which we've integrated with with our ITAM and ITSM products to be able to get a good picture of are the assets reporting in? Are they being used as you would expect them to be used and be able to then highlight anomalies? You know, why hasn't a particular asset reported in? So things like that, to, to where you you kind of look at now different aspects of the business to take advantage of some of the things that that we're doing. Or another area is human resources. We've had um, multiple customers who want to be able to start that process of onboarding a new employee, or maybe there's a lever or a mover, you know, those sorts of things. They kick it off through the self-service portal. We orchestrate some activities, which is across the business, right? You know, yeah, there's some IT components to it, right? Where you're going to deliver or retrieve assets as an example. But certainly now you're looking at more of an enterprise uh, service management approach, right? Where you're, you're, you're looking at what activities the HR team needs to take, the activities that security needs to take, the facilities in terms of building accesses or or other aspects of you know bringing somebody on board or again you know um, having somebody leave. So we were looking at those and, and really extending into again be a little bit beyond IT uh, uh, service management, but into enterprise service management. One one last example, Jason where we're now looking also at and work with a couple of customers who want to manage facilities assets like HVAC equipment or, or, or other items that are located throughout the buildings that they manage and use ITSM as an ITAM as a way to you know, field requests. Hey, something's broken. I can't get heat you know, here. Or there are lights out in a restroom and be able to to respond and set up maintenance schedules on some of those HVAC units and, and things like that. So it's really expanded into something well beyond, I think, what we initially started with back in, you know, six, seven years ago, whatever it is now, to where we're just trying to help people manage their, their IT organization. Yeah, expansive was the word that, that came to mind as you were explaining some of those things. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting changes and in evolution there. Jen, I want to get a little more perspective from you. You mentioned already that you, you only recently joined Provence, but that you're obviously very familiar with the company. You've been a customer. Can you tell us a little bit about your perspective on on ITSM and why the the connection to Power Platform and and Microsoft Dynamics makes sense to you? 
Yeah, absolutely. So let's go back and and go back in to 2017 when I was working at a company that was an Azure expert partner. All right. And I overall at that time, I owned the Dynamics 365 environment and was really working with sales and marketing. But the company decided to start a managed services business unit at the time. So they pulled me in to look at different products and see where we wanted to go with our company. And as someone who, you know, has been implementing Dynamics 365 projects and using Dynamics since 2005, or Provence made sense for so many reasons, right? Not only because of their tight relationship with with Microsoft, but they're, they're pink certified. It's it, the pro, it was built directly into the environment by deploying a solution, you know, right into Dynamics, and that allowed a lot of flexibility for me as being a one man. I was a one woman person, a one person in the department. Right, it was me. I was alone doing everything, and I'm not a developer, so it gave me a lot of flexibility to customize for the company, along with this partnership that Provence created with us and creates with all their customers where they allow us to give feedback. They would set up workshops for us to just get our input on the product and how they could make it better and improve upon it. And then we would see it actually materialize our ideas in the next product update. So for us, it was a no brainer at that time. And now, you know, fast forward a couple, couple of years and we have Power Platform come out. When Power Platform became available, I think it really allowed Provence's power apps that they created to use all the tools, you know, provided, you know, the automation, Teams, Power Automate within the Power Platform, as well as give an even more flexible platform to allow for integrations into multiple environments for their customers than the previous product. So it was just a great acceleration for their products. And now, you know, here we are today, and I've been at Provence for a few months now. I'm working with people who have been have tenures, you know, the average tenure, I think there's over 10 years. I mean, Brian, he already said 19 years. I mean, he's he's an expert on Provence and their products. And I mean, I'm not I'm not saying anything about how long he's been there. I'm saying, man, I aspire to be him someday, right? To really learn and know all the products inside and out. And so right now I'm really enjoying digging into the different offerings, working with our teams, and hoping that what I can bring to the product is a little bit of that customer perspective, you know, so I'm really excited about it. Great, great. Yeah. And it's so, it's just so interesting to hear how the, it sounds like anyway, from the way you described it, there's a bit of a natural progression in the way that Provence has sort of moved from embracing maybe dynamics to embracing power platform, really kind of in, in a way that follows, I think how the platform perhaps evolved out of, you know, sort of evolved out of dynamics in a way. I mean, that's a whole nother discussion, I think, but um, <laughs> yeah. but now it's sort of evolving alongside it and the opportunities keep evolving with it for a software vendor like, like a Provence who's, you know, sort of making decisions alongside Microsoft and evolving themselves, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And, and I guess my next question was was sort of related to that, which is, you know, Microsoft's work. How does that sort of influence your thinking on ITSM? If I may, I want to start with that one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we recognize that, you know, Microsoft's making significant investments here. And, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of those of investments to, you know, make our product offering better. Right. And, and the things that we're really looking at now, forward thinking for us, kind of getting, continuing to expand outside that box I was describing a little bit earlier is just ITSM. But now, you know, now what can we do with respect to automation? You know, uh, what can we do? And I'm going to, I'll talk about a couple of examples where we've done that as consultants and specialists between Jennifer and myself and, and, and some of our colleagues, you know, how we're looking now at taking advantage of opportunities with teams and using that as a way for customers to interact a little bit with us in another way other than self-service portal or email or phone calls or whatever, or, um, or, or even sending messages via teams, which which people like, as opposed to an email, you know, when they're saying, hey, you've been assigned something, right? Get an email. Well, a lot of times those end up going straight to trash, right? <laughs> you know, because it just turns out to be noise. But but when they're, uh, you know, you, you know, you're in teams, now it's, hey, 
This is something I can deal with. It doesn't appear to be noise. And we want to take advantage of, of you know, the, the sentiment towards teams and, and how that's being used uh, across the business. You know, the other things like artificial intelligence and and we may get into some of the other topics a, a, a little bit later, but we're really excited about, you know, being able to take advantage of everything that the, that the platform brings together. Then, you know, we were talking a little bit about people like Jennifer and, and myself, you know, we're not developers, right? We're, we're consultants, but we can assist our customers by configuring, and we're, we're configuring is the key word here, different things that, uh, it, with the, that are available in the platform to extend what we're, what we're doing, right? So you don't have to be a pro developer. You understand the platform. It's easy to use. Um, there are lots of connectors out there that we can leverage, lots of things that we can do so that it's, the, it's going back to that old citizen developer, right, concept where, you know, I'm not writing any code hardly ever except for the odd JavaScript here or there, everything else I'm able to do with Power Automate or Flow or, and things of that nature. Now, some of the things that we have done with respect to automation from a, from a consulting uh, implementation perspective is we've taken a look at taking IT requests like somebody wants uh, software, they need it for their job. Right. They go to the self-service portal. They submit a request. We initiate an approval process. Oh, by the way, we're using Microsoft approvals. Right. So we didn't have to build that. We're taking advantage of yet another element in the in the overall platform. After the approval is completed, now we add the the asset that was requested for the install to an Azure group and off you go with the, the software installation. So it's untouched by an IT person anyway, going from the beginning to the end of that, of that overall process. Same thing with uh, security groups. You know, somebody wants to be added to a security group, you go through that approval process and automatically using capabilities in the platform, assign them to that group. So just a couple of examples there. And then you know, we talked about this one a little bit earlier, but same thing with, with human resources, right? Lots of things go on when somebody's onboarding. And they need to be added to security groups. Their user ID needs to be configured. They need to have software allocated to them. Whatever those steps are, you know, we've, we've been able to, to work with customers to automate as many of those as possible to free up their resources, their valuable resources to do, to do other activities. So it's really been great from a consulting perspective and, and helping our customers do some of those little Things that maybe they didn't think about when initially when they were uh, looking at an ITSM type solution, you know, where they're just primarily we're concerned, well, how do I log my next ticket and, and support these customers? It also makes me think of the kind of the concept of, you know, the, the capabilities of like your solutions don't go away, but they maybe become more transparent in some cases from what you're describing. Absolutely. That's, that's absolutely true. Yep. All right. I want to um, kind of bring this back to service team, which is native to Power Platform, right? And, and Dynamics 365, as I think you were, you were saying earlier. Yes. Um, and I think you touched on this a little bit with some of the things you, you were just saying, but can you give any other specific sort of examples of how that's a, a benefit to Microsoft customers? Well, sure. So you know, one of the things that I really didn't mention in that bringing that the platform to the table for them is that, well, a couple of things. Number one, and, and this is from a bit of a selfish perspective, but the platform, the environment, the security model, all of those components are provided by Microsoft. We as an ISV, we don't have to worry about that. We inherit all of those great capabilities that are already there. We don't have to worry about managing data centers and everything that goes along with that, right? That is not our focus area and the platform um, it gives us uh, gives us everything that we need with respect to ultimately deploying an app or apps, hopefully, in, in the environment. But what we're also seeing is that uh, customers of ours and prospects that we're talking to, they're really looking for more of a of a suite or a platform solution, right? When they're talking to us, yes, in specific conversations, they're looking for you know, ITSM and or ITAM. But for those in particular who are ITSM customers, 
they now tend to whether to want to be able to ensure that they can leverage information data that they're capturing in other workloads like FNO, like project, like sales, like Azure DevOps, where we have connectors with Azure DevOps to be able to tie together tickets or change requests and create bugs or tasks or user stories or whatever would be appropriate as an outcome of the management of a ticket. So it's all of those things that are out there and the ease of being able to tie those all together, whether they're in the same in the same environment, the same dataverse, we're leveraging contacts, accounts, uh, sales data. And then from the reverse perspective, you know, now when a, a sales or an account exec is going to have a conversation with a customer, they can look at what's going on with respect to the to that to that customer. You know, how happy are they in terms of numbers of tickets or maybe even customer satisfaction, where, oh, by the way, we tend to use um, customer voice from Microsoft that we integrate with with ITSM. So all of that kind of comes full circle and really gives, you know, the the customers that we that we service a full picture into many different business areas. And that's a real a real advantage for us. And Jason, I think you kind of hit on it after I made my comments. But one of the other big things on and how we help Microsoft customers and Microsoft is we do develop you know, to and align with Microsoft investments and their technology roadmaps. That that is our, you know, that is what we do with our products. So that's a big help too. Yep, absolutely. Good point. All right. Uh, what are you looking forward to in the upcoming sort of Microsoft roadmap with their tools, the services, things that you think will support what you're doing? I'll go ahead and take this first and then hand it off to Brian because he may be more verbose than I <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what are you saying? I talk too uh, much? <laughs> uh, not at all. I think both of us have that issue, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, after just being here for a few months again and working with a, a bunch of different customers so far, one of the one of the big topics, and we've already hit on it a little bit, is Teams integration. You know, so Microsoft's expansion of Teams, you know, for communications is going to really help create multiple channels for self-surface capabilities. And I'm really excited about that. I've, I've tried to take that places myself a couple of times. So I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, them expanding that and really making it more feasible for, for everybody to use. And another one is um, power pages. So now that we got the power pages and it's, I think it's going to really help us with our portals that come with our products, the service team product. And based on, you know, the deep integration that Power Pages now have with the Dataverse, the Power Apps, Power Automate, you know, Power BI, Power Virtual Agents, all that stuff. I think it's really going to provide us with a, a more flexible and modern self-service capability for our customers. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. Brian, I know you have stuff that you want to talk about, so. Yeah, so the one that that I'm interested in right now is the virtual agent, the the new capability that's that's becoming available. We've done some work already, and I've seen a private preview, and and I've actually done a little work in uh, what we are going to offer and how it is going to be uh, implemented within our self service portal. And you know, I, I think the flexibility and what we'll be able to do with that to deliver. Another alternative, right, for our customers or for our customers' customers to be able to interact with the the service desk and to to be able to find knowledge or articles or submit a ticket or you know initiate a phone call if they want. We've had a lot of customers ask for that over the years, and uh, now it's uh, it's at a point I believe where. You know, it's, we're going to be close to, to delivering something here that I think will will satisfy a large component or a lar- the large base of our of our customers to again to to um, to satisfy that need for self service. We're all here on this call or listening to this, and we're all probably very likely to do our own research first before we'll ever pick up a phone or before we'll ever, ever submit, you know, click submit on a button to submit a ticket, right? We're going to look for that or, 
or maybe it's even after hours or weekends or you know those sorts of things. So the more we can do to to help uh, facilitate that self service experience, the better it is going to be not only for the for the for the end users, but but also for for the help desk and having to respond to hopefully some fewer calls, you know, or fewer of those. Uh, what, what uh, a lot of people would refer to as low hanging fruit, you know, easy ones, right? Where, you know, it wouldn't take a lot of time, but yet it takes time in order to to fulfill a ticket and to complete everything where now somebody's just self-serving, right? And and I think I think that's what the power agent and and maybe a little bit further down the road of bots, we're gonna look at bot technology as well. We'll kind of fill that niche for us and and uh, make that self service experience even better. Yeah, that's really interesting. And those all those examples sort of tick a lot of the boxes that I personally always get interested in, you know, putting some of these more, I guess you call, really call them platform types of capabilities, whether it's virtual agents or portals through power pages and taking those and sort of overlaying specialized technical expertise and industry expertise that a company like Provence has on top of some of those platform type of capabilities and seeing what, what you can really create with that. That's, that's as opposed to, you know, custom power platform stuff is great too, but there's something unique, I think, about taking a vendor's capabilities and overlaying it as yeah. opposed to something custom. Yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely right. And, and we often have that conversation when we're talking about, it's, it's almost like you're on some of our calls, but we talk <laughs> about that with respect to, um, you know, the, it, it, the one you mentioned was the, with the self-service portal or power pages, right? We always say, hey, you know, we're just layering. I mean, Microsoft's providing all of this platform capability for us. We're just overlaying the fact that you can do a ticket or we can expose a service catalog. That's the easier part, right? Microsoft's providing that platform with all of the with all the plumbing behind it that allows us to do that, right? And, and we're like more than happy to take advantage of that, and it's it's really <laughs> to, to all of our benefits to do so. Deceptively simple, I would probably call it. It's I'm sure it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, I really look forward to hearing more updates on that for sure, and see how how your team moves, moves ahead as Microsoft moves ahead with, with some of these things. You know, I try to keep up on power pages in particular. We have a power pages portals community call every month where I tend to get updates, which is nice. And I can, I absolutely agree. It's it, these things are really moving forward alongside companies like Provence that are advancing their products at the same time. So yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for both to both of you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up? No, I don't think so. We appreciate the opportunity to to have a conversation with you today and uh, hopefully we can uh, do it again in the not too distant future. Yeah, same here. And thank thanks so much, Jason. And yeah, anything you learn on Power Pages, send it our way if we don't learn it. <laughs> <laughs> will do, will do. This has been another episode of the MSDW Podcast. My thanks once again to Jennifer and Brian for joining me and this message from Provence. For more information on ITSM and ITAM solutions from Provence, visit Provence.com. That's P-R-O-V-A-N-C-E dot com. And that's it for this episode. If you want to get in touch with me, you can reach me by email, jgumpert at msdynamicsworld.com. For all of our updates, please do follow us on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Until next time, this is MS Dynamics World, signing off. Mm-hmm.